Jim Wilson is with us again today talking about the genders and reconciliation. You know, Val, Jim is the author of Living Ambassadors of Relationships. He recently sat down with Kaylin Steele to talk about how men and women are supposed to relate to one another. So we're continuing our conversation with Jim Wilson about your book, Living as Ambassadors of Relationships. Now, it's all about reconciliation, um, crossing many borders. You know, it's broad. And, and really, you talk about in the book how we can take our identity from the Great Commission. Yes. Do you want to explain that to our viewers? Well, the Great Commission is the, is the most amazing statement of Jesus. It's got three parts to it, basically. And the right. first one, we often don't think of as part of the commission. It's all worship, but some doubted. He, he says, I'll meet you on the mountain, and all worship, but some doubt it. We do not have to resolve our doubts before we get to worship. On the contrary, when we get to the foot of the cross and start worshiping, our doubts start to get resolved. Right. Second thing is baptize anything that moves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't, isn't that what it says? Ba you know, baptize all, everybody. Yeah. And teaching one another. Now, we, we translate the Great Commission into English, we say teaching them. That's not what the Greek says. Hmm. The Greek says teaching one another to observe all things that I have commanded you. It's a relationship. It is a relationship. Mm. And the truth is, before I know Jesus, I'm not readily able to access the gifts that he planted in me when I was in my mother's womb. Right. But the minute I do meet him, those gifts begin to be activated. So everybody in the body has got something to teach to everybody else. So that's the second part, is you baptize and you, you know, immerse in the gospel and you teach one another. Oh. The third thing is Jesus' promise. I will never, ever, 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 ever leave you alone. Mm. Yeah, we do get our identity from the worshiping, worshiping and bring your doubts along with you, baptizing and teaching one another, and just counting on that promise that he's never gonna, he's never gonna bail on us. Wow, that can be so powerful in today's society. I feel we're so mixed up all the time. We always kind of need the hand of God. Mm -hmm. He's pushing us. And, and we all like think that. that we have to isolate because that's what I have to do to protect myself. Mm. And he says, hey, I didn't protect myself from you. Why are you protecting yourself from me? Right, and I, when you mentioned earlier, you know, God doesn't need us to protect him. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> just laugh he that. really doesn't. No. Yeah. Well, today we want to talk about, because I know you talk about it in your book, reconciling um, people who are sexually broken. Mm -hmm. um, what's sort of the first step for even recognizing that? There again, it's choosing not to be afraid, not to be defiled, not to be revolted by somebody who's different than you are. Right. Uh, I think that probably the, you know, the biggest hot button issue in Canadian culture and my own American culture right now is, is homosexuality. And God says that homosexuality, that he's got some problems with it. Not because he hates people who are homosexual, right. but because he sees suffering in that community and he mm -hmm. sees it as an inherent feature of the lifestyle. He says, come to me and let me heal you. Uh, I had a friend, a very, very close friend, who decided that he was gay once upon a time, and it, it, it spelled the end, of our, the end of our friendship. He was very aggressive about it and, and said that if only I were honest, I would admit that I was the same way. I, Wait a second, you can't do that to me. Yeah. Well, I felt myself compelled to go looking for him because he was my friend, not because I had any sympathy for the decision that he'd made, right. but because he was my friend and I couldn't just bail on him. And when I found him, I insisted on remaining with him for a period of time, but on my terms, not his. I was not prepared to become his lover or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm, I'm your friend, and, I am, and, and, and nothing can ever change that. God moved miraculously in that encounter, and within a few weeks, he was completely healed of his wow. homosexual tendencies. Now, does it always happen that way? No. The healing of homosexuality is very, very difficult. But God does show in that encounter, which is recounted in the book, it does show in that encounter what he's up to and how he will go about it, whatever time frame he may choose to employ. Right. My job, your job, anybody's job is to say, am I going to bail because somebody has displeased me or offended me or maybe even grossed me out by, mm -hmm. by some such thing? Mm -hmm. Or am I, am I willing to say, God, you're in this and I'm in it with you and this is my friend and I will not bail? Right. That's what it's all about. I think a lot of Christians forget that sin is sin mm -hmm. and it's all equal in our God's eyes. You know, mm -hmm. how can we sort of, I guess, guard our hearts against getting those instant judgments and thinking homosexuality is worse? I, I don't know that we can guard our hearts in such a way as to prevent that from happening, but what we can do is repent when we see that it has happened. We, I mean, we're Instantly. imperfect. We're flawed. Right. So we, you know, we catch ourselves going off the reservation. We say, well, Lord, pull me back. Mm -hmm. Pull me back. Don't worry about pulling that guy back. Pull me back. Wow. I believe that I believe that's the ticket. So what about people? I know this just recently happened to me this week. I was home for a week and, and chatting with an old friend and she's her brother 
finally um, came out to her. Mm -hmm. And she's having such a hard time with mm -hmm. it. And the family isn't necessarily torn apart, but she's really mm -hmm. struggling with it. Now, and when I'm in that situation and I want to help my friend, what can we do? Okay, first of all, you and your friend can be real candid about the struggle. You can say, you know what, this is tearing me apart. Mm -hmm. If that's the truth, say it. Mm -hmm. You can also be honest enough to say, I understand that the issue's in me and not necessarily between me and my brother. Right. Uh, so so there, there again, asking God, simply throwing yourself on the mercy of the court, and you know how merciful the court of our Lord is. Right. So, I mean, start off with acknowledging your weakness, acknowledging the fact, I really am having a hard time dealing with this. Yeah. And at the same time, I love you, and I'm not willing to bail on you. Lord, help to reframe. It's the very same pattern of reconciliation that we've been talking about. Be upfront about who you are. Respect who the other guy is, whether or not it's right or wrong, whether or not you agree with it. Say, Lord, you've got to reframe, because we can't do it without you. Right. So how can Christians um, approach others? Like I know you said, that just ask God to, to really deal with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but how can you approach others that have other sexual problems without being offended? Okay. First of all, you need to ask yourself, is it my call to deal with Joe Blow's sexual problem? Right. If you're called to it, then by all means you do approach them. You approach them from the standpoint of, of one who's been healed and, and wants to seek to share healing with that other person. If you're not called, just pray for them, bless them, and, and leave them alone because there are people who are called. Right. And you don't want to interfere with their calling to that other person's healing. Interesting. So would you say you're called? You had a yeah, lot actually, of I, I, with I, I, I am. I'm, I'm not called as, I, I wouldn't say that, that there's a significant dimension of my ministry that is sexual, but I have been called on a number of individual cases to be an ambassador of healing and, and have been able to do that. And if I'm called, I go for it. And if I'm not, I just pray. Right. Great. Well, Jim Wilson, you certainly are an ambassador of healing, and you guys can read all about it in his book, Living as Ambassadors of Relationships. You can get this on his website, Pray North State. Dot org. Now, I know you started that ministry and it has just exploded. And uh, this is a really good opportunity for you to just um, share how should people be praying in their areas? Acknowledge the fact that we are in the greatest time of opportunity since Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the fact that it's all coming home. And then just say, Lord, show me what you want me to do and connect me with the people who I, with whom I can do it. Wow. Now. Great. Well, I'm, there's lots more we can talk about, and we're going to be right back after this with Jim. Coming up next, discover how an attitude of sacrifice can heal 